Okay, I'll be covering some functions today uh, to import HTML and XML. And generally we'll be talking about importing HTML, uh, but I'll show you how you could use uh, XML to actually import HTML too, because HTML is basically a subset of XML. So first of all, we're gonna start with something very basic. So I'm gonna go to this page on Wikipedia, and if I scroll down, uh, I'll see that there is this little table on this particular page on Wikipedia. So if I scroll again, there is the second table and the third table. So basically these are community areas in Chicago. And I'll show you how we could import this data to our Google Sheets. So I'm going to go to the, my brand new Google Sheet and I'm going to start with my equal sign as usual and I'll start typing my, my function. So the first function I'll be talking about is import HTML. So I'll be going over here and by the way, the, day I, the way I'm picking the function is once you get uh, your autocomplete results, you can just arrow down and scroll and choose the function you like and just hit tab and it's just gonna populate the rest for you. So the first part of this function or the first argument is going to be the URL of the page where the information is coming from. So I'm gonna go ahead to this Wikipedia page, copy the URL, go back to my Google Sheets and I will have to put the string in quotes because uh, in Excel if you want to, or Google Sheets, mm doing too much Excel classes apparently makes you say Excel all the time. But anyway, so in Google Sheets, we have uh, our strings in quotes. Otherwise, it's going to look for a function or a range that has this name, which it doesn't. So there it is, that's our string, which is the page, the URL of the page. So I'm gonna hit comma, that's gonna move me to the second argument. So the second argument is what type of form this information is in. So import HTML function can include two types of forms, a table and a list. So a table would be this. So this would be a table and that should be an HTML table. So the way you can actually make sure that what you're looking at is an HTML table, if I right click in my uh, Google Chrome browser and I just hit inspect on this element, if I look right here, you'll see that the HTML element is the table for this. So if the element is a table, then we should be able to actually import that using a table. So let's go ahead and write table. Again, this is a string. So that's gonna be wrapped in quotes and comma. And the last argument is this index. So the index is this. So on this particular page, we have multiple tables. If you remember when I said, if I scrolled from top down, there was this one table, then I scrolled, there's the second table, the third table. So basically the index is the index of the table on a page. This is, this seems like it's the first table on a page. So uh, I don't think this one is a table. I'm not gonna inspect it, I'll just go for it. I think this is the first one. So let's just go ahead and try it. So I'm gonna just put number one as the first table, close my parentheses and hit enter. So, and yes, it turns out that's that table. So if we go here and take a look, that's the accurate table we've got in. Looking good and that's our table. So if I go back to this function and switch this one to two, we should be able now to import the second table from the list, which is right here. So let's take a look. Yep. We have our information right here from the table. So that's our import HTML uh, with our table as a second argument. So I'm gonna, I guess, switch this back to number one. We have the first table. So now let's find an example of a list. This one might be a list, so let's take a look. So again, if I look at this, uh, see this is a list. This is an unordered list. This is the UL tag. And we have list items in here. 
So this should work for a list. Let's give it a try. I don't think there is another list on top. So this seems like it's the first list. Let's give it a shot. So I'm going to go here, right here, where I have some space. So I'll go ahead and type my import HTML, open my codes, go ahead and copy my URL for the page, paste it in, and then I'll type list as the item I'm looking for. And finally, I'm going to give the index number one as the first list on the page. And if we're not mistaken, that is, there it is. So the first item here is community areas. This is this entire chunk is the first item and the second item, the third item and the fourth and the fifth item. So this is how you can use import HTML functions. So it's pretty straightforward, easy to use. And there we have our information. So I'm going to rename this tab import HTML. Okay. And now I'm going to start a new tab here. And now we'll be covering another function, which is import XML. So import XML is what I would say is much more po powerful function than import HTML. And uh, with I import XML, you could actually do more and extract more information from the page if you wanted to. So uh, let's try to use it. So for example, uh, remember how we have all of this table, the first table, the second table, the third table, the fourth table, the fifth table. So let's try something with our import XML function. So I'm going to copy this page because we'll need the URL for the page. So I'll go ahead and type import XML as my function. And the first argument is again going to be our URL. So I'll go ahead and use my URL. Then I'm going to use comma. And now the second argument is the object from the page or what they call as a XPath query from the page uh, we want. So it needs to be in quotes again as a string. So I'm going to try something like this. I'm going to give it a table as my string. So let's see what happened here. So uh, I've exported quite um, uh, imported quite a bit of information here. So that's number of communities. So near north side, it seems like we're importing the entire area in here as a table. So that's kind of a little messy. This seems like we've imported all the tables from there, but they're very disorganized. So this is not very helpful. So let's take this a step further. So in HTML, if I explore my HTML tables, you will notice that inside of the table, the table structure in regular HTML is that you have the table and inside of the table, you have this TR element which is basically the table row element. So this is, for example, would be the first row. See, that's the headers on top. That's the second row, the third row, the fourth row. So what I'm going to do, instead of just importing the table, I'm going to do something else here. I'm going to go ahead and after this table, I will go ahead and add another hyphen here. And what I will use is my TR as the table row. So let's hit enter. Let's see what we get. So that's interesting. Now we have a little better formatting. We're including our table rows. That uh, what I want you to see is that let's say this is near north side. Let's take a look. So what's our first table here? So there it is, that's near north side. Then we should have the loop. Then near south side. Then what is the next one here? So near south side. And then we have the second table, which it has a table row, which is the north center. So 
Oh, the, so the first one is again, it's not that, it's the header area here. So there it is, that's the header area. And then the next table row, so basically we're e extracting every single table row from here. And then there is apparently some more rows all the way down on a page. Again, this is now much better. But what I'm really trying to accomplish, I just want to get all the community areas in Chicago. And uh, unfortunately for me, they're not in a single table. So if you look at this, this is this community area. Three of them are listed here. Then there are more of them listed here. Then there are more of them listed here. And so it goes. So they're not very well organized in here. But I, I think I've uh, oh actually looking at this it seems like we've accomplished it with the exception that we have some junk in this table so let's try to actually get this to look even better so what I'm going to do is look inside of my HTML to make this much cleaner and I'm going to look at our table structure. So if we look at our table, again, the first one was table row, which is the element we I was extracting right now. So I'm going to look inside of the table row. And if you see, there's this TH, which is our table heading element, which is this basically the header section of this file. And then if I look here, this one table row, there are this TD elements. So that's the table data element that we have inside of those. There it is, the second table data, the third table data. So these are our table data elements that hold the actual data. And these are the TH elements which are holding our table headings. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this a step further and I'm going to go to my table data elements. So right now we're looking inside of the table and inside of the table we're finding a table row which is the TR inside of the TR we're finding the TD okay so let's hit enter let's see what we got so right now it says 8 north side and whatever this is so let's see what we're extracting so what we're extracting is basically we've skipped this because these are not table data anymore right and here where our first table data starts. So this is the first one, 08, then we have north side, then we have this third box with all of these elements. So there it is, 8, north side, and the third box with all of these elements. So all of them are just row by row, and then we'll go to the next one, which is 32 loop, and all of these, 32 loop, all of this, and so on. So that's, now we got to table data elements. But now, what we really wanted was just the community area part, right? We didn't want all this 08, we didn't want all this neighborhood stuff, so just the community area. So what I'm going to do after this TD, I will go with this square bracket opening, and since it was the second one, so if you look here, this is the first one, and this is the second one. So since it was the second one, I'm gonna put two in here and close the square bracket. I'm gonna hit enter, give it a second, and look what we've got now. A clean, nice list of all of our neighborhood, neighborhoods. Loop, near north side, then north center, Lakeview. Isn't that nice? So that's the way we can get the entire list. So this is, I want you to note that this is not just one, one table, this is from all of these tables that are located all over this page, but we were able to just grab exactly what we're looking for right here in the second row of each table. So there we have it. So if I did something like TD3, I would grab this neighborhoods column and it would be like these guys. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. So I'm go going to just give, copy this, right? gonna hit escape to get out of here without changing anything and right here I'll try to paste and instead of TD2 let's use TD3 and let's give it a shot let's see what we got so this what this is doing it's doing the third row and as you can see it's just merging all of these together on a single line which is not really looking that pretty 
honestly but we were able to actually get them so that's the third data table and it's excluding all the markup out of it but I'm thinking we could go a step further because we're inside of the third data table and what we're really looking for is this seems like these are list items inside of this table let's take a look so it seems like this is that table data element then we have an unordered list and then we have a list item inside of it so let's try to use that structure to actually get better data so once I've extracted this I'm going to try UL and then I'm going to try LI which is inside of that UL and looks like it works just fine so there it is the Gold Coast Goose Island look at if it's in mile isn't that great so all of these community areas we're just extracting them right out of this box put them line by line right in our worksheet just like that so you could use this structured way of XML to actually grab any part of HTML page you need so for example if you had like a product grid of different products with their links to the product page uh, links to the image links to uh, you know or not links but the price of the product or the title of the product you could actually go to that page just look at the HTML and look at the structure of H HTML and give our XML structure just like this and you should be able to grab all those elements out of the page just like that all right, that's it. That's our import HTML and import XML function. And I'll see you next time.